Hey everybody, it's Uncle Mars with another episode of Elite Wine TV. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for coming in. What's that? Thank you for stopping by. How about that? Um, remember, no edits. Anyway, um, so what we got today, we got another white wine. Now, this wine also got at World Market. So, uh, World Market, anytime you want to be a sponsor on the show, you can let me know, buddy. Um, so this one, actually, I don't have to look at the receipt because it has the price tag on the back. This one was $7.99. Now, why did I buy this wine? And we'll talk about this in a little bit, about why people buy wine. Um, I, I bought it. was on the same shelf as one of the other wines we, we reviewed, the uh, El Torito, um, that wine. But uh, it was a cool-looking bottle. And then we had a little bit of marketing bling there, a little Cupid thing going on. Don't really know what this has to do with this particular wine or the, uh, or the varietal. Um, but I did look it up. It's the Torres San Valentin, uh, and I gotta look at this varietal again. Uh, Parellada, Parellada, Parellada. Anyway, Parellada is. And we're just gonna go with that pronunciation. If I'm wrong, guys, tell me in the comments. Um, but it's a, it's out of the Catalonia area, uh, Catalonia area of Spain, which is northwest part of Spain near France. Did a little research. Um, and this is one of the three main varietals uh, of cava, which is Spain's equivalent of champagne. Uh, in case you didn't know, champagne is only champagne in Champagne, France. It has to be made there. Anywhere else has to be called a sparkling wine, or in the case of Spain, they call it cava. Uh, with my little notes here. Now, the other two varietals that are used is, uh, and I'm probably going to mess up this pronunciation too, but it's... Uh, Masabio or Macabio, it's M-A-C-A-B-E-O, and then uh, Charello. Now that one I know how to pronounce, um, but it's spelled X-A-R-E-L, then a dot or a hyphen, depending on who's doing it, another L-O. That's really to make sure that in um, in the Catalan language or dialect, um, you don't make the two L's like a like a Y sound. Uh, you actually pronounce each L. So they do that. They spell it out that way. That's yeah, a little more fun facts for you. I'm all about trivia, guys. All right, so um, uh, bought the wine really because, you know, the bottle's kind of cool. I had never seen it, and I'm all about trying new varietals. I mentioned last in yesterday's episode that, you know, this is a varietal I never had. I've never heard of this. I had to look it up at the, at the store because I didn't know if that was the varietal or, or what, it was, what I was looking at. But, um, and apparently this is one of the only producers that uses this as a single varietal wine in a still wine. Um, so... Really interesting. I'm kind of excited to try this one out, and uh, we'll see what happens. Let's go ahead and pour a little bit. We got to rinse this out. Wow. I don't know. I just had this feeling it was like oily, pouring out. Didn't like. I don't know. Let's try it. Yeah. It looks like really thick. All right. So um, color-wise, you know, I don't really go about the color. It's kind of nice. Uh, just a little thing about color. Color doesn't always indicate quality of wine. I mean, when wines age, they change in color, and they're supposed to change a certain way. So if you know a bottle of wine is, say, 10, 15, 30 years old, it should be a certain color. Um, but that doesn't always indicate whether wine's good or not, just so you know. All right, so let's take a look at this. This is a little sniff here. Lots of citrus, lots of citrus in this. I mean, my first thought was like oranges or tangerines, you know, really fleshy citrus, you know, like that type of citrus, not citrus in, um, uh, well, citrus is mostly like what, lemons and oranges and tangerines, but not lemon, but more of a, more of a orange or tangerine type of, Type of play on there. All right, let's check it out. It's pretty sweet. Not sugary sweet, not like a dessert wine sweet, but. Um, it's got some nice sweetness to it. Um, very low in acid. Uh, I, I would actually, 
I would kind of compare it uh, in, in the mouthfeel and the sweetness to a Riesling. Um, to say, yeah, like a German Riesling that's, that's not meant to be dry. Um, I can see this really pairing well with like spicy stuff. Um, I've had wine very much like this that uh, goes well with, say, Chinese food. So I can see this going really well with that. sweet by the way my little traffic text on the phone there um i like this wine i, I would again i would say probably in the mid mid to high 80s um for for scoring of the wine um i'd buy it again you know 7.99 pretty good uh, a few things <clears throat> I was talking about restaurants yesterday show about how they serve things too cold another thing about restaurants is they normally don't give you glasses this big. Uh, they usually give you these little glasses. And what restaurants usually do, they have between a four and a six ounce pour of wine. And they give it to you in small glasses. There's, right, there's a lot of reasons for that. One of them is so that your bartender isn't just sitting there pouring a bunch of wine in the glass, to, you know, hooking up their friends and only charging for one glass of wine. Um, also, I mean, glasses like this, they're really nice. They break real easily. So the smaller glasses, they're usually thicker glass. They're not really, you know, thin. They don't have, you know, they don't have big feet on them. Um, they don't have really thin stems. So they don't break as much, and they're easier to store. They're smaller and all that. So, I mean, it's something where, you know, you've got, um, you've got a lot of uh, uh, reasons that they do that. But one of the things, and I don't necessarily do this, but if you really want to taste your wine and be able to smell it, ask for a second glass an empty glass so you can pour some of it into the empty glass and then you can swirl it you can really smell it and you can really get the bouquet because uh, a full glass you can't really swirl the wine so what I end up doing is I end up drinking a lot of it and then I'll go ahead and do the bouquet part um, and I'll smell the wine a lot so another little thing about wine and, and restaurants and all that kind of stuff alright as always uh, leave your comments uh, comments are really great really appreciate reading all of them um, also off to the right we've got the uh, donation button the subscription button for like if you want to do a monthly donation and uh always 1337 wine on twitter i'll get some links up to the website hopefully soon hopefully by the time this video is actually up there'll be links to that um facebook and all that i'm trying to work on facebook i thought i had a fan page set up or a business type page set up and it seems like it's a personal page and i'm really not happy with that because once you create an account with one email address even if you deactivate the account it's like you can't do anything with that email address again. So, uh, and Facebook is, seems like it's really hard to contact anybody there because there's no obvious link to email them. So if any of you guys have an idea how I can fix that and make the page more of a fan page rather than a personal page, um, let me know. Shoot me an email, mark at 1337wine.com, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Don't know what we're going to have yet because i got to buy some more wine. That's it. Thanks a lot for joining me.